Aubrey, uh, how's your day going so far? Uh, it's been a rough day. <laughs> you know that's going to be an awesome positive answer when it starts with that sound. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Guys, I, know, I really son. I I just want to remind people to watch this on YouTube. Um yes. IELTS Energy TV, you got to see Aubrey's reaction. Okay, tell us about your day so far. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So my son came home from school sick. And of course this happens. Kids come home from school sick. And then, you know, if they really feel badly, they go to sleep. You don't see them all day. They really feel this was not the case with him. As soon as we got to the car, I picked him up from the nurse and he really did look sick. And when we got to the car, he was a changed person. He's like, (laughs) let's go to lunch. Let's go to the movies. I'm like, oh, Oh, okay. Uh, And I couldn't just take him back into school because the nurse told me she had taken his fever and it was super low. Like it was a fever, but like 100.3. Yes, took his temperature, very slight fever, but enough that I had to pick him up. But he clearly still felt fine. So that's been my day with him coming and like, I'm still not tired. I can't sleep. Wanting to be entertained all day. (laughs) You know, the uh, that story you just told could be an IELTS part two answer, you know, like um, describe a difficult day you had recently like that would be a great story to tell in part two um so inspired by aubrey's wonderful experience today uh we are going to talk about vocabulary related to faking illnesses or not going to school when one should so we'll teach you four vocab phrases about those things and we'll give some sample answers and questions that you could see on the IELTS exam related to these terms. Um, Aubrey, have you, have you ever faked an illness to like get out of school or to get out of going to work or something? Oh man, I'm trying to remember specifics. I'm sure that I have. It sounds like me. It sounds like something I would do. (laughs) No, you're too honest. You couldn't do that. I feel like the reason I would do that is if I were to be going on a vacation or had something I couldn't miss and I had requested the time off and it was refused. If they said like, sorry, you absolutely can't get this time off. And so I would feel like my last resort was to call in sick on that day. If I really had no other choice, I hate to admit that I would do that but what else are you going to do? I want to point out a couple phrasal verbs that came up when I was asking you that question. To get out of something means to um, not to give give a reason so you don't have to do it. To get out of your chores, to get out of going to work, to get out of going to school. It means that you don't have to do that thing anymore, right? You gave a reason, you're off the hook, you don't have to do it. Um, to get off work though is different. That's just to like not go to work, <laughs> to have the day off, to get off work. So a couple of bonus phrasal verbs for you. Um, Aubrey, what is the first vocab phrase today? So just the verb ditch, ditching school. This kids do this all the time. Sometimes people ditch work as well. It's yeah. just a really fun slang verb for skipping, for not going. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, And I want to point out also that all of these phrases and the stories that we can tell about them, these are such great ways to connect to other people in real life, right? Yes, these are fantastic for IELTS speaking because they're native and natural. They're interesting. But guys, also remember them for real life because These sorts of conversations, like Aubrey and I could tell stories to each other about (laughs) ditching school and it would be such a fun conversation. Absolutely. Or at work, right? If you want to kind of make small talk to ask someone and be like, hmm, I noticed you ditched work a couple days last week. Where were you? (laughs) Totally. Totally. Um, Now here's a second term for that. Play hooky. I feel like this is sort of an older term. It's not used as much today, um, but I still like it. I still use it use it. It's, it's still considered uh, in use. So to play hooky is the same thing. Like you don't go to something that you should usually work or school. Um, you could say like, you, like on Friday, I decided to play hooky from work. So I think that preposition is important. Play mm. hooky from. So I decided to play hooky from work and I went to the movies. 
Nice. I could I see this being really useful more generally too, though, right? If you are talking about being more of an introvert and you're asked about what you do on the weekends or what you do for friend with friends, right? Mm -hmm. And if you were to say something like, all my friends went out Friday night, but I decided to play hooky because I just didn't feel like it. Like this, yeah. it usually, we do usually collocate it with work or school, but you can be a That's little true. more flexible anytime you're ditching something, anytime yeah. you're not going to something that you probably would be expected to attend yeah so i would say playing hooky and ditch are synonyms don't you think for sure absolutely yeah yes. so they're definitely informal though so they're great for any part of ielts speaking even though they're informal you could still use them in speaking part three because they are very topic specific and therefore high level vocab but i would not use these in writing um no. So we also have a high level phrase that could be used anywhere because it's impressive, it could be academic as well. Instead of fake an illness, you could say feign an illness. Now, we need to explain how to spell this because it's not obvious. <laughs> Right. It's spelled like rain, right? F-E-I-G-N. It really does not look like it's pronounced. So that's tricky. But yeah. this is such a good point. This is band nine vocabulary. I've totally. never heard a student use this word in all of the times I've done, you know, speaking tests. So yeah, if you can say, and like, like you said, Jessica, this could come up for writing task two, speaking part three. If you're talking about maybe a government or right, a, a company faking something in some way, faking progress progress instead mm -hmm. say feign or feigning progress yeah um man, this is such a good word so we often use this i feel like it's collocated with um emotions mm -hmm. a lot also like to feign happiness to feign sadness right so anytime you're talking about faking something a feeling could be a physical feeling like sickness or an emotional feeling then you could always use Feign. Um, I'm not good. I guess I can feign um, like excitement sometimes, but I'm honestly, I'm really bad at lying. And so I'm not good at feigning um, positivity or excitement. Like I either feel that way or I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. I'm maybe too good at it. I've played a lot oh, of, no. there are like games where you have to bluff and fake, emo like Mafia, Werewolf, there are these games and I'm really good at faking people out, right? Feigning <laughs> surprise or feigning innocence. And then I win the game because it was like, well, I can't believe it was Aubrey. <laughs> Actually, I am good at feigning interest. I feel like that's often oh, used. Those two words are often used together. That's a good skill for dates. <laughs> When but sometimes, I mean, like, Aubrey, you have four kids, you know, oh, parents yes. have to feign interest a lot. Um, yes, I absolutely. wish <laughs> I was as fascinated with cars and engines as my son is, but I'm not. But I will listen to him talk about these things for hours. Yes, for and sure. And feign interest. <laughs> All right, here's the last one. This is a fun idiom. To pull someone's leg. Uh, so this is a different meaning. It's not just fake, right? It's very specific. Um, what does it mean to pull someone's leg? Yeah, it's to trick someone. Yeah. So if there's some kind of practical joke, but I would also say that my son pulled my leg today, right? He tricked yeah. me into thinking he was really sick. So though it is more of a specific meaning, this could be super useful all over IELTS speaking. Anytime yeah. you're talking about fooling someone or being fooled by someone else, you could say you pulled their leg. Or I just thought of a great way to use this on IELTS speaking. So I'll share this, guys, and then we'll get into some uh, example questions that you might see on IELTS for this vocab. Um, if you are, because <laughs> I've seen students do this, that like you, you know that you can't be silent um, when you're thinking of an answer. So some students will just start talking and just sort of make something up mm. but then you don't have enough to say because you're lying you're making something up so what if you start doing that okay i'll give you an example um the examiner says uh tell me about the last art museum you went to um and you you're feeling you know nervous pressure and you're like oh i went to the louvre last week no i'm pulling your leg i've never been to france 
And it's like, (laughs) oh my heck, I love that idea so much. If you find yourself starting to make up a story and then you realize like, I think it's really obvious this isn't believable and I don't have anything else to say, just pretend you were trying to fool the examiner into believing you. Actually, I'm pulling pulling your leg. leg. I don't have a good answer for that, so I made it up. (laughs) Yes, I love that. That's so great. And then you're getting that idiomatic language as well. I would love that if a student did that. All right. So let's explore some questions that students might see on the test. Um, We have some speaking part three questions that could also be writing task two questions. And then a part two question we'll share at the end. So what are some speaking part three questions students might hear? For example, you might be asked, what are some behavioral problems children have in today's schools? Or do children behave better in school today than they did in the past? These types of questions come up all the time about education and how it's dealt with in different cultures. Oh my gosh, think about problem solution essays. Um, I've seen that topic numerous times Mm -hmm. in writing task two problem solution or even opinion essays. Like, um, what do you think is the main reason why students do this or something? Um, And then speaking part three, of course. So let's go ahead and give a sample answer. Aubrey, do you wanna ask me one of those questions and I'll try and use the new vocab? Perfect. All right, Jessica, what are some behavioral problems children have in today's schools? Honestly, it's shocking. I feel like when I was growing up, I th- I thought students were bad when I was growing up, but the stories I hear, albeit anecdotal, they're just for my son, but I am shocked. Apparently, in middle school here, students are ditching school all the time. James says that seventh graders, seventh and eighth graders, consistently play hooky and just hang out in the school bathroom. Um, They don't even, it's not like they're even trying. They're not feigning an illness. You know, they're not like giving a good reason. They just ditch. They just don't even go. And so, um, and nobody's keeping track of this. No, there's no um, like administrators trying to fix this problem. So um, that's the biggest behavioral behavioral problem that I know about. Ooh, impressive. You squeezed in all of that vocabulary. I feel like that was <laughs> awesome. And I want to point out the bonus vocab to say, albeit, what a ba- like band nine word to Ooh. say that. Basically just means like, maybe it's the case that, right? But really high level if you can just squeeze that in. You said, albeit anecdotal, meaning like, okay, everything I have is just what my son has told me, right? Oh man, you guys got to figure out a way to sneak that into one of your answers. Anecdotal is such a great um, adjective, guys. It just means this evidence I am providing is just based on a few stories I know. That's all. It's like, this isn't like a huge research study. I didn't read this in the newspaper. This is purely anecdotal, just based on my own personal experience. So awesome adjective. Yes. Um, And really quick, (laughs) just to uh, say, can confirm, I hear the same thing from my high schoolers, right? Since seventh, eighth, and eighth grade, every time they go to the bathroom, it's just full of kids that are just like not going to class. Like why, how are they getting away with that? You know, (laughs) (laughs) I I really have a lot of opinions about all of this. Like I am continuously shocked about the stories I hear from James about his school. I'm like, what is even middle school for? What are are they even worried about teaching? Um, This is a huge reason why I am getting my substitute teaching license is so I can be in the schools now. I want to be there. Yes, Jessica, make a difference. I love that idea. We need you. We need your strong voice to make a difference. Help. I know what you're doing. I was in middle school once. Okay. Back to IELTS, guys. Here's a couple more questions that you should practice on your own um, and use today's vocab. So what's one more part three question that they might be able to use today's vocab for? So you might be asked about corporations, like Mm. do companies provide adequate sick leave in your country? Um, Something like this would be a great way to talk about, you know, if you think they don't, that like what I was saying at the beginning where uh, you might have to fake sick in order to get the time you need if you're not given it by a company. Yeah, totally. Um, And an acronym there that you could use that would 
what it's not just industry specific it's everywhere pto right personal mm. time off no paid time off sorry <laughs> paid time off so that's an acronym you guys could throw in um and finally what's a part two question they might be able to practice yeah describe a time you took a day off work so oh. you could like jessica did for her answer use all of this vocabulary in one part two yeah. to avoid repeating the same words over and over throw in an idiom throw in this great slang right and yeah yeah, for a part two like that, you could definitely use all of these. Yes, I love it. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you for listening today. And if you want to send us a question, uh, maybe we'll feature your name and your question on a future episode. So write us at support at all ears English dot com. All right. Awesome. Aubrey, thanks for chatting today. Awesome. See you next time. Bye. Bye.